With the rising popularity of the Dune franchise, thanks to recent blockbuster films and a new HBO series in the works, this game really has perfect timing. Dune Awakening is an ambitious open world survival, massive multiplayer online game set on the harsh deserts of Arrakis. It's developed by Funcom, now these are the devs that made Conan Exiles, and this game blends survival mechanics with large scale multiplayer dynamics where players can explore, build, and fight to dominate the spice rich land. It is inspired by Dune's deep lore, and Awakening will drop players into a world where they must manage resources, craft gear, and navigate political intrigue. So apparently you'll be able to join guilds, align yourself with various factions like House Harkonnen and House Atreides, and you'll be able to participate in guild versus guild battles for control of the spice, wielding some basic vehicles like sand bikes and also advanced tech like ornithopters, and also specializing in your combat skills. The build the building system in Dune Awakening is something I'm really looking forward to. Basically, you'll be able to create uh, detailed blueprints, basically they're like holograms, it's also called ghost building, so you can build up your base in stages, but you'll also be able to copy these designs and introduce them to a player exchange where they can then be sold to other players, creating a sort of market for unique inspired base designs. The game also has some RPG elements to it, where you'll have unique character progression pathways. You can develop your character by walking the path of the mentor the Trooper, the Planetologist, the Swordmaster, or the Bene Gesserit. Dune Awakening was recently showcased at Gamescom, where Funcom premiered gameplay, revealing elements like dynamic desert weather and base building and spice harvesting events that encourage large player interactions. It is set for early access in 2025 on PC, with later releases for PS5 and Xbox Series X and S once the game goes gold. One thing to note here is that from the interviews that I've watched, Funcom has acknowledged that Conan Exiles is known for its certain level of jank, and they're trying to avoid that. So they're trying to like fine tune the gameplay systems and combat and everything with Dune Awakening before it's released, but we'll just have to wait and see if that's the case. Light No Fire is probably my favorite game on this list, the one I'm looking forward to the most. It is the latest ambitious project from Hello Games, the studio that's behind No Man's Sky, which admittedly was a bit of a late bloomer of a game, but I'm optimistic that Hello Games can apply some lessons learned from the launch debacle that was No Man's Sky to Light No Fire and it is set on a sprawling, Earth-sized fantasy planet, and this survival sandbox combines the depth of a role-playing game with the freedom of an open world. Players are invited to explore, build, and survive on a procedurally generated planet packed with diverse biomes from lush forests to expansive deserts and even towering mountains. Now, procedurally generated can be a bit of a blessing or a curse, right? So it depends on the execution, and again, I hope that Hello Games can learn from the shortcomings of games like Starfield when it comes to procedurally generated planets. Unlike No Man's Sky, which spanned the entire galaxy, Light No Fire focuses on a single but continuous world where you can establish communities and build settlements and even scale mountains, dive deep into the oceans. It's, it's pretty much a freedom to roam. You can explore anywhere. The game also features rich multiplayer options, allowing players to meet up, team up, you can run into each other while you're out exploring. Character customization offers unique fantasy options, including playable creatures. Uh, you can even tame and ride dragons, for example. Hello Games describes the gameplay as a balance of exploration, combat, and building, where each player can leave their mark on the world, creating persistent buildings and discovering landmarks that are named after their founders. You can even have like mountain ranges named after you, how cool is that? Though it is still in development, and has been for the past five years by the way, Light No Fire is expected to release potentially as early as late 2024 and possibly pushing into early 2025. The game aims to launch on PC with other platforms possibly to follow, but nothing confirmed just yet. Stay tuned for more. Middle Ages Peasants and Knights is an upcoming medieval survival game set in a gritty open world inspired by 14th century Europe, and it's going to transport you into a world that prioritizes historical accuracy 
and immersion with complex crafting systems based on actual medieval methods and a unique inventory mechanic that reflects real life limitations. So basically, players will only be able to carry as much as they realistically could. This makes for a more hardcore survival experience where players have to strategically manage your resources, your food, and your water, and every decision is impactful. In Peasants and Knights, you can choose to live more of a simple life as a farmer. You can cultivate crops and raise your livestock, or you can take a more ambitious path by gathering resources and fighting off bandits and ultimately building a village or a castle of your own. The game will feature both single player and online multiplayer modes, allowing cooperative gameplay as well as PvP skirmishes for control over territory. And the devs aim to create a deeply immersive world where every choice affects survival, making it both challenging and rewarding for players interested in a sort of realistic medieval life simulator. Set to launch in late 2025 on PC, Middle Ages Peasants and Knights is still a little bit early in development, and it's only being worked on by a team of 15 developers. I, for one, am definitely looking forward to seeing what they can cook up over the next year or so. Renown is a new medieval survival game that's mixing the best parts of open world survival with skill-based melee combat. So think like Rust meets Chivalry. It features robust base building, everything from a cozy little shack to these massive fortresses, and you'll need a good base as well to defend against others and also to launch your own assaults from, featuring these powerful siege engines. But it is a survival game, so you'll have to gather some resources and craft your own weapons and tools, and you'll be able to totally customize your look so that you're never just another face in the crowd. There is a social element here too, so it's kind of got some MMO properties, so you'll be able to team up, form alliances, and even claim titles and, and be assigned ranks within your alliances as you explore and conquer the lands in search of your own renown. <laughs> See what they did there? So here's the latest on Renown. It just crushed it on a Kickstarter campaign. It raised over $180,000 and it is set for early access release by mid 2025. The team has been hard at work on their new Algara expansion, bringing in some new areas, points of interest. There's even a new like ocean river system. There's a new city named Brimon. Supposedly that's where you'll find the best loot. They've been polishing up the tech tree. They've been fine tuning the UI. They've been adding dynamic reverb to boost up the sound quality. <coughs> Yeah. There are optimizations for smoother gameplay, especially around big castles, and they've promised full mod support upon release. So Renown really is shaping up to be something unique and special, and even though PvP isn't exactly my forte, I am really excited to team up with others for these epic Bannerlord style castle sieges. Here's a look at Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl, the highly anticipated sequel that transports players into the eerie depths of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. This is scheduled to release on November 20th, 2024, and brings players back to its roots in a sprawling and seamless open world map covering about 60 square kilometers. This brutal terrain is filled with dangerous mutants, hostile factions, radioactive anomalies that demand your careful navigation and strategy. Now, supposedly the game's survival mechanics are intense. You're gonna need to monitor your hunger, radiation exposure, all of your health ailments like bleeding, all the while contending with the zone's dynamic weather, day-night cycles, and an upgraded AI system, which they call A-Life 2.0, which keeps the world constantly shifting. Factions and mutants will be fighting for territory, roaming freely, they can ambush you, and it'll create a unique experience every time you go out to explore. Players will control a character named Skiff, who is a lone stalker, who has been tasked with finding valuable artifacts and discovering the zone's secrets, all the while making decisions that shape the branching narrative and in a sort of situation where, you know, decisions matter. Heart of Chernobyl has faced several delays at this point, partially due to the challenges encountered during the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, which forced the team to relocate to Prague. The game will launch initially on Xbox and PC. From what I've read out there, there's gonna be a three month exclusivity window, and then it's gonna be opened up to other consoles like PS5, but I don't have any concrete information on if they're actually working on it for PS5 or if that's just a possibility down the line. Stay tuned for more information on Stalker. Star Rupture, from the developers at Creepy Jar, also known for their work on Green Hell, which is a very immersive and intense survival game set in a jungle. This game departs from those themes, taking players to a distant, volatile planet in a survival game that mixes base building with intense FPS combat and resource management. I'm thinking like, 
satisfactory meets Halo, kind of. You'll play as an exiled convict sent to extract resources and construct industrial systems and fend off relentless waves of alien creatures. So it also has sort of a Starship Troopers kind of vibe to it. The planet's ecosystem is shaped by extreme cyclical cataclysms driven by an unstable star called Ruptura, making each cycle a fresh survival challenge as players adapt to the fluctuating conditions like scorching hot heat or freezing cold. Now there's going to be both single player and multiplayer options for up to four players, so you can play solo or co-op. Just check out this image right here though that shows just how crazy the base building can get. I just hope that the hordes of alien creatures scale up like this because I just want to be one of those guys in Starship Troopers that's facing down like thousands and thousands of bugs. No word on release date just yet, so keep an eye on this one. The latest gameplay reveal was in August 2024 though, so they're definitely making some good progress, and I can't wait to check this one out. Keeping with the theme of blockbuster-inspired survival games, let's have a look here at Terminator Survivors. It's a fresh take on James Cameron's Terminator universe, set to release in early access in 2025. This first-person open-world survival game transports you back to 2009, which is four years after Judgment Day, and that's when Skynet became self-aware and began its extermination of the human species. So you're playing as a survivor in this hostile world, and you can either go solo or team up with up to three friends to scavenge for resources, build up bases, and brace yourself for looming threats. One of the game's most exciting features is a new mechanic. It's similar to Resident Evil's Mr. X. Basically, there's a Terminator that's in the world with you that's hunting you down relentlessly across the map, adding a layer of suspense to your already difficult survival. So you will be able to build up bases and scavenge for resources and develop your skills as you progress. All the while, you have to try to stay one step ahead of these deadly, unstoppable Terminators. Unfortunately, we do not have any gameplay footage just yet, so temper your expectations for now. It was originally planned for release in late 2024, but Terminator Survivors was recently delayed to ensure that the developers could, quote, do the right thing by the fans and the universe. This means more time to enhance the immersive experience and smooth out the combat and polish features like the co-op and survival mode. It basically giving us a more compelling survival journey through the apocalyptic Terminator world when it launches next year. At least, that's the hope. This one here has to be the most unique game on this list. In the Alters, 11-Bit Studios, the team which is also behind This War of Mine and Frostpunk, crafts a unique sci-fi survival experience that tackles themes of identity, choice, and survival in a strange world. You're gonna play as Jan Dalski, a space miner stranded on a deadly planet where lethal solar radiation forces him to move constantly, piloting a mobile base to avoid the sun's deadly rays. The twist? is that Jan uses crystal-based technology to create, quote, alters, and these are different versions of himself, each shaped by alternate life decisions. These alters come with their own skills, their own personalities, and even their own emotional needs, offering solutions to complex survival challenges while introducing personal dynamics that must be managed carefully. Are you confused yet? Because it took me like, I don't even know how long to even surmise this much. <laughs> anyway, the gameplay here should blend exploration, resource gathering, and base building with deep psychological elements, as each altar adds its own unique expertise to expand and upgrade the base. Players will need to strategize under time pressure, since you know the rising sun can obliterate the base if Jan doesn't stay ahead of its path, uh, the developers describe the experience as an intense, introspective survival journey with strategic depth and a branching narrative that explores how different life choices shape Jan's ability to survive. This was originally slated for late 2024, but the Alters was recently delayed to quarter 1, 2025 to give the team time to refine the game's intricate systems and optimize player experience on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S and X, and on PC, where it will also be available on Game Pass. Keep an eye on the Alters. In Towers of Agasba, and yes, that's how you pronounce that word, Dreamlit Games invites players to a beautifully crafted open world fantasy where building exploration and ecosystem management are the core elements. It is set on the island of Agasba, and players are tasked with restoring the land and creating harmonious villages and cultivating vibrant biomes filled with unique plant and animal life. And when I say unique, 
I mean, this is stuff you've never seen before. You'll play as a member of the Shimu tribe, responsible for rebalancing civilization with nature, all while exploring the lore and mysteries of this ancient island. And to be honest, with all these different names so far, I'm already getting a sense of the, the depth of the story that's going on in the background, the world building that's gone into this. Speaking of world building, this was inspired by the art style of Studio Ghibli, who are responsible for Japanese anime such as My Neighbor Toro Toro and Spirited Away. The only reason I know anything about these is because my girlfriend is obsessed with them. And so the game's visuals add a whimsical charm which really enhances the immersion of this creative world. And so Honestly, this is a really interesting take on things because typically in a survival game, you have to go out and, and chop the trees and cut the grass and, and take everything from the land in order to build up your own village and your own fortress. But in this game, you work with nature and with the wildlife, like the, the wildlife and, and the trees and everything, that is your fortress. It's something that um, I find very endearing about the game and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this all works. In terms of gameplay from everything I've seen, the combat looks pretty reactive and pretty fun. There are other things like, you know, swimming and climbing and gliding and riding mounts that all look very nice and the animations look good. And of course, you know, balancing the growth of your village and conserving nature and the environment for yourself is one of the keys to the game, but you'll also be able to do this with your friends visiting each other's islands, trading ideas and resources, which adds a certain social layer to the whole adventure. Currently, this is scheduled for early access release on PC and PlayStation 5 on November 19th, 2024. And I think this game's really gonna to appeal to fans of open world sort of life simulation games like Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing, but with an adventure element akin to, say, Breath of the Wild. This one really stands out to me on a list that's otherwise filled with, you know, sequels or, or games that are based on movies and shows and stuff like that. This one should be an entirely new experience. In Rooted, Headlight Studio delivers a unique take on post-apocalyptic survival. You see, this one is set in the year 2100, so we are generations past the event that caused the downfall of humanity. The game invites players to survive in a world that's been ravaged by bacteriological war. Nature has slowly reclaimed urban and rural areas, but remnants of the old civilization still hold value. Players can explore cities, forests, and villages, salvaging materials to rebuild society, all the while learning how to craft everything from makeshift weapons to fortified bases. And Rooted showcases realistic graphics and immersive environments, bringing the haunting yet beautiful post-apocalyptic world to life. I don't know about you, but when I see this game, I think of The Last of Us, both the HBO series and the game where we were just like decades beyond the apocalypse and nature was like slowly trying to recapture everything and like all the vines were overgrowing and stuff and just how surreal that was to actually see and explore. Rooted offers solo and co-op gameplay so players can explore and establish their camps alone or with your friends. The game emphasizes resource gathering and base building with options for players to customize out posts in various locations so you can have like one location forward operating base out in the city where it's more dangerous and you can have your main base out in the forest in terms of threats that you'll encounter it's basically going to be wildlife robots or of course the worst of all other survivors now these can all be friendly or hostile and it should add a, a bit more of a, a dynamic threat as you progress of course you're also going to have to contend with the, the the bacteriological contamination that still persists in the world still in development rooted is anticipated for early access in 2025 on pc they raised a whopping one hundred and twenty thousand dollars on kickstarter which was twice their goal and they've recently been conducting some massive alpha play tests so i've been following this one for a long time and i have to say i'm really impressed with the progress and seemingly the team's commitment to finishing a game that looks more and more like what the day before was supposed to be. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this list of my top 10 survival games that are coming out soon. Do me a favor though and let me know what your top three are. I kind of just want to get a sense of what other people are into so that I know what I should be covering on my channel going forward. As always, huge shout out to all of my supporters over here and shout out to you as well for making it until the end of this video. I hope that I have earned your subscription today and that I see you in a future video. Take care everyone.